you're a rabbi, but your main focus is talking to Hasidic couples before they get married about sex. Is this correct? And not only to Hasidic couples. All Jewish couples. Every couple. Catholic. Yeah. It's a universal thing. Okay. I think most people are into it. <laughs> I actually wrote a book on the subject mm-hmm. called The Joy of Intimacy. And the theme of it is that intimacy is sorely lacking in our relationships. Mm. It's like nothing is intimate anymore. Since the 60s, hmm. when they took all the intimacy out of intimacy. So the 60s movement. Yeah, it was like uh, free love, mm-hmm. free of what? <laughs> free of intimacy. Free of rules. Free of rules, free of commitment, free of attachment. Mm-hmm. It just became empty pleasure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And now we're paying the price. In fact, I think the Me Too phenomenon mm-hmm. is not a lack of respect for women, a lack of respect for intimacy. Hmm. And that's where so much of the misunderstanding happens. Okay. What? I was just having fun. Aren't we supposed to be having fun? Right. Well, it's not fun. Right. Because you can't fool Mother Nature. So, in your religion, I find this to be interesting, that has, the Hasidic religion is looked at as very conservative from the outside. It is mm-hmm. a conservative religion, yeah. a lot of rules. Yeah. It's looked to be closed off, uh, somewhat secretive, I would say. Maybe not for you, but that's how it's perceived. Mm -hmm. And you actually, every couple has a coach, a sex coach before they get married. Because they're all virgins before they get married, you know, in theory, right? That's the, that's the whole goal. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Humans are humans. However, that goes down. But the, but right before they get married, they hire someone like you to come in or how does it work? They don't have to hire. Okay. It's like part of the teaching, mm-hmm. <clears throat> part of the education. It's it's marriage counseling, premarital, and not sex counseling. Oh, okay. And that's one of the important points. Sex is not treated as some exotic subject. Okay. It's life. Right. It's marriage. It's why we're here. It's why how we're here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Just didn't happen. Okay, so... So you don't have the talk. You know how American couples... Right. They're going to sit their kid down and have the talk. Mm -hmm. Terrible. That idea? Yes. Why? Because you're treating it like something out of the ordinary. Taboo. Taboo or dangerous or scary. (laughs) Just talk. Don't make it the talk. So... I don't know how far I can go with this. I'm going to try that. Let's just pretend I'm, you know, a Hasidic Jewish man coming in, about to get married. What what are we going to do here? What's what's our talk? And it's not the talk. I understand. Okay. But what's our talk? So there are two themes. Themes. Uh huh. One is intimacy versus sex. Okay. And the other is male and female. These are two areas in which we are so dismally ignorant. How so? Wait, did anybody talk about sex? To me? Yeah. No. What? Nothing. I grew, I grew up Protestant. It's a taboo subject. Zero. I had to figure it out. Right. It's assumed you'll figure it out. The birds and the bees figured it out. You'll figure it out too. Right. But like somebody said to me, I don't need God to tell me how to have sex. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but if you want intimacy, you need a little coaching. <laughs> intimacy takes a little thought. Sex? Yeah, yeah. You know. You'll figure take, it out. That, you'll figure it out eventually, but it would be hel- you know, it would be helpful to have some, yeah. say, tips in the beginning, know yeah. what you're doing. Yeah, because but if yeah. not, you end up with some scars. Uh, right? Scars. Yeah. Emotional scars? Yes. You get hurt, you get embarrassed, you get intimidated, discouraged, hmm. or a little too proud of yourself. <laughs> right. Depending on which way it goes. Good point. So you, you're more, you're more, more involved with teaching intimacy. Yes. Okay. Because that's what's missing. Really. 
So I heard, well, actually, I learned a couple weeks ago from a rabbi that in your religion, you don't touch the woman for two weeks out of each month. Right. Explain that a little bit. During the time that a woman is having her period, uh-huh. she is not as receptive and therefore no go. No go. No intimacy and you don't start anything. No kiss on the cheek, good morning. No. Okay. No no shoulder back massages, nothing. No. Off the Too intimate. Up. Okay. And that's another thing. What exactly is intimate? A kiss is not intimate. A hug is not intimate. A massage is not intimate. A kiss can be intimate. It better be. Yeah. Not only it can be. It better be. Yes. Because we've reduced so much of the intimate. We've turned it all into um, recreational pleasure. Yes. And then we complain. There's nothing intimate. (laughs) Well, you did it. Okay. You did it intentionally. So that's one of the rules. There is no such thing as a partial intimacy. Mm -hmm. If you're going to kiss, make it a kiss, not a peck on the cheek, which is like neither here nor there. So I'm going to be coming out of here changing some of my behavior, maybe. Yeah. Okay. This is a very practical. This is a free session. It's very practical. So I I will uh, give my wife a peck on the cheek sometimes, and then intimate kisses the other times. So you're saying. Go intimate or don't do anything. Yes. You'd be surprised at how intense it becomes. <laughs> how old Which are you? is what it should be. How old are you? 74. And you're still practicing this? <laughs> well, now you're getting personal. <laughs> what? You're, you're yes. kiss, you, you still kiss your wife? Yes. Okay. When I'm in the mood. When you're in the mood. Not as a routine. Okay. Right? Same thing with saying I love you. It's lost all its meaning. Everything in repetition all the time loses its meaning, right? Hi, I love you. Bye, I love you. Okay, I love you. Let's get divorced. Okay, I love you. <laughs> okay. So where, where do you think society is falling short right now? Since you're here to, to help people, what's, what's the biggest problems that right, you see? So get right to the issue. Yeah, please. To the jugular. Do it. The relationship between husbands and wives has become pornography. Mine hasn't. It's become, what is pornography means, uh, objectified. Okay. It's a performance. You're supposed to achieve a certain degree of satisfaction or pleasure. Some people are really good at it. Some Uh people are not good at it. And they need coaching and counseling and pills and toys and it's pornography. Here's the difference between intimacy and just sex. Okay. Intimacy is about us. Sex is about it. Mm-hmm. So after a couple have been intimate, and the husband, for example, says, how was it? See, that's pornography. Hmm. How was it? It was just us. Because it became objectified somehow? It became an objective, okay. a performance, and something other than us. It's, it's almost like a, like a triangle. There were three of us in the bedroom. There so was how, me, you, and it. How, what's a better way to phrase it? Intimacy means two people merging with each other. There's no it. Becoming one? There you go. Do you, what if, what if by becoming, by coming together, they both accelerate, but they're still separate, or you think they, they come together as one unit? How is that possible? They become one, where they become literally inseparable. They can't imagine being without each other. Yeah. But then again, they're two people in everyday life. Don't you think there are basic tenets like uh, respect and trust? Oh, yeah. That has to be very solid. And until you have that, you can't build anything. Yes. The, the, the attitude that once we are in love mm-hmm. and we get married, then we can do whatever we want. Our relationship is indestructible. 
Mm. So I can be at my worst, my sloppiest, my ugliest, and it's all going to be fine. Well, no, it's not. In fact, with your spouse, you've got to be better than you are with a stranger. So with a stranger, you're careful what you say, you're considerate, and you're, with your spouse, you say whatever comes to mind, and what are you doing? So, yes, respect is mm-hmm. a lost art. <laughs> even even in your community, that's... To some degree. Look, I see a lot of your communities held on pre-60s to a lot of the values, let's say, right? <laughs> in some cases, it's just reaching us now. <laughs> 60s are, yeah, reaching, are coming The 60s in. are happening. That it's, you know, it's, it's unavoidable. Yeah. But, you know, you hear couples, the way they talk to each other, and it's shocking. Yeah. It's shocking. Yeah. Because you know the guy is a nice guy. Why is he treating his wife like a dog? Yeah. How does this happen? Yeah. One of the causes, too familiar. Familiarity breeds contempt. So how do you, look, if you're with someone all the time, every day, how does it not become familiar? That's that's the art. Naturally, if you're careless and let it go, you'll become too familiar and it's going gonna, it's gonna to turn nasty. Nasty. So what are some strategies to keep, to keep it from that? What, okay. what so do you, what I, do you I, teach I, your... I grew up here in this house. Okay. Yeah? My parents lived upstairs. A little, a little exaggeration, but not much, right? We never heard our mother's name, first name. Because, you know, we don't, we don't call our parents by their first name. Mm-hmm. And my father hardly ever called my mother. Because when he needed to talk to her, he would go to where she was. Mm. There was no screaming across the house. Like, where are you? Come here. You don't talk to each other like that. Okay. So when I hear this, it like shocks me. That's how you talk to your wife? It's so, it's so disrespectful. Mm -hmm. It's so, it's so vulgar. With a relationship that has to last for the rest of your life. Take, take good care of it. Be don't. careful. So don't do that, obviously. Right? That's that's a no-go. So there's Calling. a tone okay. that is appropriate, and there's a tone that is completely inappropriate. So it's work. It's respect. If that's work, you're in trouble. No, what I'm <laughs> saying, if you're yelling uh, for your wife yeah. across the other side of the house, it takes a little bit more work to go walk. It's not really work, but you no. understand what I'm saying. Yeah. It takes it's, it's lazy to call it yellow cross. Yeah. It takes a little work to go and make things better. Yeah. Okay. So do you think a, a, a lot of it has to do with people just become lazy and complacent in their lives? They lose respect. Okay. Because the familiarity will do that if you don't protect it. Mm-hmm. So let's go back to the objectification. Sure. A guy says to me, I love everything about my wife. I said, interesting. Your wife wants a divorce. <laughs> so what uh, What gives? Right. <clears throat> Does he love everything about his wife? No. Probably not. But, but even if he did, there's something wrong in his entire approach. He loves everything about her. He doesn't need her. So again, it's things. He loves this about her. He loves that about her. So it's this and that. It's not her. He likes things that make him happy or feed his ego, right? What he's getting from her. Right. And it could be very noble things. You know, she brings out the best in me. She, uh, she, she makes me a better person. Okay. Mm -hmm. But is, is that her? So I asked this guy. I said, you love everything about your wife? Yeah. Do you love her? He said, I told you, I love everything about her. I said, no, not about her. Her. He says, I don't know what that means. And here's the kicker. If that's how they're living, Mm -hmm. and they're happily married, he loves everything about her, she loves everything about him. Mm -hmm. And yet, they each feel alone in the world. And that's the dangerous part. That feeling of aloneness, it's literally dangerous. 
It's, you think it's a big problem? It's a huge problem. What about the Hasidic community? I know uh, statistics, I, I don't know the exact number, but roughly 50% of Americans get divorced, right? Married couples get divorced? Something like that. What about in the Hasidic community? Much lower. 20? I don't know. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> unfortunately, there is a statistic which shouldn't even exist. It should be so rare because marriage is a fantastic institution. Mm -hmm. We can't, we can't live without it. Mm -hmm. We can't be a society without it. And we can't get rid of that aloneness without it. It's the only cure. You guys have that figured out quite well, from what I've seen. Yeah. The aloneness problem. I don't see many, much aloneness going on in these streets. Right. But it's, it's a, it's a very deep and profound need. Mm -hmm. You can have Tons of friends, and you're all alone in the world, which is what's happening to Americans. We're very outgoing. We're very friendly. We're cosmopolitan. We've been everywhere, mm -hmm. even the Ukraine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you come home, and it's just me. In England, they actually started a department in the, in the Ministry of Health. Mm -hmm. They opened a special department to deal with the crisis of loneliness. Mm -hmm. Because when you feel alone in the world, your immune system crashes. That's a good thing. Well, I maybe million, I'll, like millions of hits. Maybe I'll ask off camera then. Yeah. On uh, this sensitive topic. But tell me if you don't want me to post it. That's what? fine. Yeah. Uh, look, in, his, uh, in Hasidim, you know, the this, all this, cameras, internet, whatever, is a distraction from the void, from God, right? Not if you use it properly. It's a wonderful tool. The internet's a wonderful tool. YouTube, Instagram? Oh, yeah. Are you on Instagram? I think so. <laughs> and YouTube, uh, uh, everywhere, I think. Maybe not TikTok. Not the, yeah, me neither. That looks annoying. Yeah. Okay, so let's walk through, let's walk through a case study. Because I'm sort of getting what you're doing. I'm, I'm, I'm understanding your your uh, thought process of this. But if a couple, how does it work? They like they schedule an, an appointment with you. They come in together, sit down at a table, mm -hmm. and then how does it go? Usually it's separate. Okay. Talk to one at a time rather than together. <clears throat> because you basically, what, what the guy needs to hear is a little different than what she needs to hear. How so? Male, female. Okay. So men are what? More aggressive and female are mm. emo more emotional or what? No. Okay. What, what would the difference be that you would explain? Okay. So on the subject of male and female, mm -hmm. uh, a woman getting married is looking for someone she can lean on. Her, her rock, right? somebody that she can support and follow and, and, and cult, uh, uh, nurture. Mm -hmm. That's the nurturing nature. The man, on the other hand, has to feel that he has something to offer, he has something to bring to the table, and that uh, he is the provider, the giver. Mm -hmm. She is the receiver and the nurturer. Mm. You cannot really be content in life unless you feel like you filled that role. So a man's greatest contentment and pleasure comes from knowing that he provided, not received. So you're saying if the woman provides and the man receives, it's it's not going to go over well? It will not go over well. Mm. It's a biological thing? I'm, I'm, or cultural? No, it's natural. It's natural. Okay. It is male psyche, female psyche. Okay. It could be biological. So they come in, you, you, you teach them a few different things, but perhaps give us a summed up version. 
of what you would you would say what would you would tell the guy what okay. would you tell the man so the the main point is yeah you're marrying her mhm not something about her and the reason you're getting married is biblical there's no other reason <laughs> it's not like it's a good idea mhm convenient no it's not it's a biblical idea it's part of the religion mhm god says be married and become one So the objective is to become one, to unite. In order to unite, you got to get all of those things out of the way. Because mm. any thing comes between you. It stops being about each other, becomes about the thing. Yeah. So here's the real shocker. You're getting married because you're looking for love. You will never have intimacy. because you're looking for love not for her. Mhm. And that's why if she doesn't love you, it's over. Yeah. There's no relationship other than the love. So technically you are married to the love, not to her. Hmm. So then it could mean uh there could be many matches for someone. Many possibilities. There's not one specific person on this planet for each person. You if really it's going for the love. Right. Right. That transpires through everything, right? If you're looking for love, you can love just anybody, almost. Mm. But then you're marrying the love. It is no better, really not. It is no better than marrying for money. In fact, money is more practical. <laughs> If you enjoyed this conversation or this topic and you're looking for more information or you want to hear it again from another angle, There is a way to do that. And that is in this book. It's all there. Order it from Amazon. You can read it, reread it and share it. We have a Sunday night program for VIPs that you might be interested in. It's informal. It's questions and answers, it's conversation. It's really relaxed, it's really pleasant, enjoyable. informative and uh, kind of community like it's a sunday night program there's a um wednesday morning program for the vips and there's a wednesday night program all of it just conversation casual laid back unscripted so join us take a look click uh, the link below and see which which of the three suits you best and join us for some enjoyable conversation